We will start in about five minutes. Thank you.
If you ordered lunch, there's still uh, lunches back there, but I think we're going to get started here. All right. Thank you all so much for being here at First Thursdays with Sustainable Tulsa. We appreciate you uh, being a part of today. This is exciting. I think people are interested to really understand what sustainable development goals are, and that this is a kind of a 101 today. Um, but uh, before we get to, again, if you ordered a lunch, it's back there. They came a little late today, but they're here. Uh, but thank you so much for attending. And I want to thank our lead sponsors, which, are, which is PSO, for their support as well as thanking Cavanta, the TCC uh, uh, Center for Creativity, PSO Wind Choice, and Grog Screen Barn, One Oak, and Save Our Streams for sponsoring today's program. Let's give them a round of applause. I also want to thank my team, which is uh, Megan Hurley and Sarah Hicks, give away back there, and, and Jill Maud. Um, if you haven't met them yet, please make a point to say hello. Uh, I want to uh, thank uh, my board members that are here today. We have uh, Pam Taylor, Mike Lemus, and Aaron Larder, if you'll give away. Let's thank them for their leadership for Sustainable Tulsa. Um, I also just, because I can, just uh, welcome two uh, guests today. Uh, my mother-in-law, who's been coming for so long, Phyllis Raskin, and is a die-hard recycling uh, fanatic now that she's been coming to First Thursdays, and my daughter, Lily Raskin, who's been traveling for nine months. She just came back to Tulsa and has been learning so much about sustainability. I love that there's this generation here thinking about sustainability. So if you'll give them a welcome. So one thing we do right when we get started is we want to take two minutes, stand up, introduce yourself to someone that you have never met or want to meet because this is all about community. So take two minutes. We'll get back with you. Think about when I get back. There's things that you should have submitted. Let's do that. Let's do that. Mid June. So what, what's your what, what's your vacation plan schedule for the summer? So I'll take a little time off in July while my dad's in town, but then I'll take off a good chunk at the um, right after scorecard I mean, yes. 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 And I'll be back for the September first Sunday. Okay, thank you so much for introducing yourselves and uh, being friendly. <laughs> okay. So uh, just as a reminder, uh, thanks to uh, Full Sun Composting, there's composting over here, and to TCC for recycling. There was recycling uh, both doors there, so we thank them for that to make possible that our event is more sustainable. Um, also, our next first Thursday will be July 11th, due to the July 4th is the first Thursday, so we're going to July 11th, and it'll be on Simple Choices for a Better Home, and it's just gonna really be about the individual, and it's presented by Marla, Esser, and she is, will be here at the Creativity Center, and 
this is a chance for you, if you have something you want to share that you've been doing that is a good hack or a good opportunity to be more sustainable, we'll have booth space for that as well. So if you're interested in sharing what you know how to do, there's a sign-up sheet at the sign-up table. Let us know and we'll reach out to you so that you can share some best practices that you've been doing at home. We'd love to do that. Uh, also, uh, Recharge, it'll be our second annual Recharge will be on September 21st and it's a great opportunity to celebrate celebrate sustainability at Canes. And so if you're interested in coming, participating, being a sponsor, uh, please let me know. We'd love to have and include you. I also want to just say that, you know, we can't do this without our sponsors and without individuals. Without you being here, there's nothing to do. <laughs> so we appreciate that you're here and engaged and interested around sustainability for our Tulsa area community. And um, But before we get into our topic today, I want to also introduce um, a, a new member of our community, which is Chris, Crystal Reyes. Uh, Crystal Reyes is, is currently serving as the Chief Resilience Officer for the City of Tulsa, overseeing the City's resilience strategy that calls for using a racial equality and social justice lens in all of City policies, programs, and practices. Previously, she held various positions in government and nonprofit sectors in New York City, coordinating multiple disciplinary, community-led, and citywide efforts to address disparities in health and well-being. Throughout her career, Crystal has focused on improving the quality of qu and, and quantity of early education opportunities for children, improving supports for family, and developing meaningful community partnerships. Crystal has a Bachelor of Arts in Politics and Spanish Literature, as well as a Master's Degree in Public Administration from New York University. We are delighted to have you in the Tulsa community. And she's just going to do a little welcome. So let's, and let's uh, invite Crystal up. I was saying, I, you'd always think those bios are the short ones and they just feel so long. And um, So thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, earlier this week I met with Corey and Megan and it was just such a, such a, a nice conversation to be talking about um, resilience and sustainability and the intersections and how important it is for us to be thinking about that integration. Um, and so I'll just, you know, say a few words about kind of what I'm thinking um, our work, how our work can intersect with your work, um, and also kind of a call to, to continue this conversation. I'd love to in include the groups that are here as part of the, uh, in this work. So um, I also, I recently moved to Tulsa, so this is my fifth week here, and uh, <laughs> So I love events like this because I can like see everyone at tables and talk very quickly and get out and, and learn about the amazing things that are happening here in the city. Um, and so I'll, I'll just share like just three things um, I wanted to convey about sort of the resilient Tulsa strategy. And first, but I wanted to say, if you, could you raise your hand if you've heard of or have read the resilient Tulsa strategy that was issued last year? Okay, so. And raise your hand if you haven't. Yeah, so that's, okay, so I'll, I'll just share a little bit of what that is. So last year, um, the mayor's office and my predecessor, who many of you know, Devon Douglas, released a resilient Tulsa strategy. That was um, basically the culmination of a, almost a year and a half uh, work, a year's worth of work to work with communities to decide what are the visions and the goals that we want to push forth to make Tulsa a more equitable, um, and resilient city. And so the work was spearhead, or was the impetus for the work was an initiative called 100 Resilient Cities, um, funded by the Rockefeller Foundation. So about two years ago, Tulsa became one of those 100 resilient cities. And there are cities all over the world, um, not just in the US. And the framework that the 100 Resilient Cities um, uses is, is really aligned with, I think, Sustainable Tulsa and the work that's taking place here. So I'm gonna read those four sort of frameworks um, from, the, fr from uh, 100 Resilient Cities and just remember that Tulsa is using a racial equity, um, an equity lens, but a focus on racial equity lens to um, use this framework. So the four tenets of this framework are health and well-being, so that's health equity. Everyone, regardless of your zip code, your identity, your race or ethnicity, should be um, able to live a full and healthy life. Uh, the second one is ec economy and society, so how they describe it is living peacefully and acting collectively. 
Uh, the third is infrastructure and environment. So do we have quality services and supports um, in times of uh, non-crisis and in times of crisis and disaster? And lastly, leadership. So uh, do we have quality leaders and empowered communities that can co-create um, meaningful, actionable solutions together? Um, and then I looked at the materials that Corey sent me, and you have social responsibility, economic vitality, and environmental stewardship. And so I just think those are, those are very much aligned, and we have so much work that we can do together. Um, and so uh, I would encourage everyone um, to check out the strategy. It seems like uh, most haven't seen it or maybe haven't heard of it. Um, and I'm also happy to meet with folks to talk about your work and how it can align. There are 41 actions, so 41 sort of projects, policies, and programs in this strategy, um, and I think they touch on um, many of what many of the goals and issues that you're working on. And so I'd love to be able to have the conversation and see how we can partner to make this a truly a strategy that's within all our domains, um, not not sitting in an office in the mayor's office and not sitting within one. Um, with one person's portfolio. It really is a citywide effort to make Tulsa a more equitable and resilient city. So, thanks. Oh, sorry, one last thing. So, in uh, last year we launched 918 Day, which is September uh, 18th, and um, we'd love for folks to get involved with 918 Day. So, uh, please come see me. I have a little sign in sheet. I can give you my card, or if I can take your card. We want uh, lots of participation, either you know, being a place in the city where folks can visit, um, being involved with a, like a promotion, like doing something related to 918. Um, the motto is celebrate the 918. So, thanks. Thank you, Crystal. And if you haven't met Crystal, make a point to introduce yourself because she's excited to get to know this community. So, uh, so uh, next uh, we have, we're lucky to have Julie Sky with us. She's going to be speaking on UN's 17 Sustainable Development Goals. She has over three decades of experience in the financial service industry. Julie combines her experience with her passion for value-based investing as she works with families, nonprofits, and endowments to identify their environmental, social, governance, which is ESG values, and build portfolios around those factors. This process turns financial markets into change agents that tackle the issues that matter to each person, often with the competitive returns. Her knowledge of research-based best practices allows her to focus on strategic planning and investment policy design for families, organizations, and retirement plan participant education. And she's really been studying uh, these sustainable development goals, so we're lucky to have her here today. Let's welcome Julie Skye. So where I come from starts a lot longer ago than 33 years ago in the University of Tulsa working on my MBA. Um, it starts back in the 60s. I grew up in Detroit, and my home was less than a mile away from the Great Lakes, and we didn't know there were Great Lakes. We never swam in them. We didn't visit them. They were contaminated beyond belief, we thought. Today, if you see what they look like, you see that um, it's a very different story. But at the same time, um, so this environmental focus has kind of been a theme through my life, but more than that was the social justice aspect, because I grew up during race riots. I grew up with people shooting into a house in downtown Detroit where my family lived. And that focus on social justice seeped into my DNA. And it was inevitable that I would never find a career that would pull everything together. I didn't know that the investment industry would do that. Uh, they say go to work and do what you love and you, no day would be like work. Well, a couple of years ago, I was asked to leave the firm I was with because I didn't fit in as well as perhaps I could have. And it was obvious that moving into my mid-60s, it was time to live my, live my passion. So um, I launched the firm. I'm at 36 degrees north. And half my time is spent managing portfolios. The other half is on social justice, especially around um, police violence, 
um, how we ensure every human in this city has a quality of life, because no one's going to move to Tulsa if it's not safe, if it doesn't represent our values. So um, the SDGs are kind of like my life work, and I didn't know. So today we're talking about finding your place. And on your seat, there is um, a little piece of paper that I have there. Yeah, Jean, hold one up. Um, I'm getting ready to, make, to launch a remake of an organization I work with. And so by the end of today, I hope you will write on the back of it the SDG that you work with right now in your organization or your company or ones that you might want to work with. Because after we go through this, um, if you've signed up to get uh, an email from me, you'll get the presentation and some other materials. But I really suspect every single one of you has two or three or four or five, or like Sierra Club. How many do you guys have? Ten? <laughs> so I suspect you're going to find how much you have already going on in your life, and that this gives you a handy framework for that. So. Okay, nothing's happening. Corey, <laughs> nothing's happening. <laughs> I'm supposed to arrow over. Is something happening up there and I just don't see it? <laughs> oh, she said keyboard. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you. So, Sustainable Tulsa set the bar for doing this work around the environmental work. But what about the rest of the world? So, we all know what Sustainable Tulsa does. The city would not be the same as it is without it. But, there's a lot of words on this slide. I violated every law. You're supposed to have like five bullets. But it's kind of up there, so as I give you a little bit of a narrative, you can kind of see what they say about themselves. It's amazing to me to think about, think about, the United Nations had a meeting, and they decided that they were going to create a working group for, with every human in the working group. If you work on a committee or a board that has eight people or 12, can you imagine creating a framework for every human being? How would you do that? How would you start it? What would it be like? So for people who think the United Nations has outlived its usefulness, um, I don't think so. So they focused on health and poverty. You don't see banks. You don't see corporate America. What you see are people and quality of life and their health and the having everyone at the table. So I think it's amazing that um, they didn't ask corporate America to fund this. This is completely funded by the United Nations, and the resources they make available don't cost you anything. And anybody can join in. Anybody can do this. So, can you see some of these little conversations? For my investment business, I use environmental social governance, but this takes it to a new level, the right to work. I mean, right now we're hearing a lot about the human right to uh, clean water, the human right to health, the right to education. But what about the right to life, the protection for your child, the right to work? How many of us get up and think about what that means to have the right to work? And I've got some really cool um, case studies showing how companies are collaborating here. The rights of minorities, the right to a fair trial. So this wraps in social justice. Um, it doesn't look like it's talking about economic justice. It doesn't look like some of the usual things we see. And I think it's because it comes from a totally different place about equality for every human being. So I build portfolios for clients that focus on environmental, social, and governance. and. Um, if you want a company to really do a good job, you don't have the president of the company, the CEO, and the chair of the board be the same person. So we spend a lot of time going to every company in, this, in, this, um, in the world, basically, and talking about these issues and asking them how they're tackling them, asking them what they're doing, asking them to do more. 
showing up at shareholder meetings, uh, organizing dialogue. So in Tulsa, um, Kuma, Kuma's not here, is she? But who's representing Kuma with Mosaic? So you would see diversity. Um, that would fall under the social area. The research that goes behind, what happens when you have a diverse workforce? How much better companies perform? So these are kind of cold, hard silos that don't really tell you what, what it's going to take to get past that. So think. If you're a STEM person, think. Periodic table of elements meets changing our world. What would it look like? Now let's see if I can. What happens if I click that? <laughs> OK. So when you get this presentation, you'll see a bunch of little hot links. So you can go through and look at some of these things here. So here we are. And these are all, uh, they're all over the place. They're on all our sponsors' tables. They're, um, so you're going to start getting used to, when you leave here, I'd love it you would say, um, hi, I'm Jean Lemon. I'm a, so Jean Lemon, you would be life below water. Who else would you be? Climate action. Climate action. So if we start looking at ourselves in terms of, I'm a 14 blue, and looking at what we're doing, and who else is doing that work, and who would want to do that work, um, I think that's going to be very fun. OK, so now how do I get back? Do I just close it? OK. So it just doesn't take a village anymore. This, this is a global village. When you see the people who have um, signed up, it's not just America leading the charge anymore. That's what's exciting. It's not just America that's in the driver's seat. See here we have no poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy. So Barbara, are you and Gary counting on which ones, which ones are you for Sierra Club and ready for 100? Decent work and economic growth, industry innovation and infrastructure, reduced inequalities, sustainable cities and communities, responsible consumption and production, climate action, Life below water, life on land, peace, justice, and strong communities. You notice it doesn't talk about the bottom line, but how many of you think that the bottom line is going to be better if this is how you're doing things? I mean, I know that. I know that the research is in, that um, doing business the right way and corporate social responsibility is not just something you tack onto a website. OK, so at the end, after we've introduced all the sponsors, we're going to have the Wheel of Fortune. So that's going to be very fun. You're going you're gonna to wait to see that. But so I'm not going to reveal that yet. Oh, wait, I did. Dang. <laughs> OK. But when you get this presentation and do that, what will happen is every one of these things you click on tells you the goal. It gives you targets. You don't have to write. You don't have to sit and say, I'm going to make this up. It gives you targets of what other people are doing. And they want you to steal their material. They want you to take it and use it and customize it. 403 partnerships. What if, what if you want to align with somebody else who's further along than you? What if you don't want to spend any money? What if you can't spend any money? These partnerships, these things in place, 37 publications, 55 documents. The resources are there, and if it feels overwhelming, all you have to do is click and drop down a level. Click and drop down a level. And once again, here are the goals all lined up. And oh, look it. What will happen if I click on that? It says YouTube. <laughs> maybe, it will, maybe it will play.
So the resources are there. All we have to do is go download these apps. So how do you make the SDGs, and you probably are wondering when am I going to say STD, aren't you? <laughs> Every time I say this, I know one of these days I'm going to say STD. How do you make the STD sticks? Not many people are really hoping that's going to happen. So I just, if I say it up front, just know I'm jinxing myself. I know I'm going to say it. So how do you make it real one person at a time? How do you do that? So last fall, many of you have heard my story about going to the Interfaith Center on Corporate Responsibility. I was on an airplane. I was reading Barron's. I take Barron's and Oprah every time I travel. I open it up, and I see nuns with guns. And I said, I'm working with some nuns and guns. And it turned out these nuns and guns were making serious impact with Sturm Ruger and Dick Sporting Good. Nuns and guns. And they were the nuns I was working with. So I go to this conference in New York City. I spent a week being lost on the subway. I was exhausted. But SHIFT is the leading center for, of expertise around human rights. So I have a terrific presentation. If you want me to email it to them, I know that um, Caroline would love to share that with you. And maybe someday we'll get it here. So I've got her <laughs> URL there. Um, but respect for human rights, that's what she thinks sustainable development looks like from a social perspective. So the single greatest way most companies can contribute to socially sustainable development, the SDGs. Shift the focus. When you dig in, you get to the people. So there's three pillars of the guiding principles. The state has a duty to protect. That's what our government is supposed to do of every country, protect. Corporations have a responsibility to respect and to meet the needs of the people. There should be a way that we have a remedy for victims to have access to effective remedies. And I think over the next decade, we're going to see more and more along this line of what do you do when corporations and governments get it wrong? How do you restore trust in a system that's now broken? OK, so here's a case study. So. You sit down there, if you get Carlos Moreno in the room and a whiteboard, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a fabulous strategic plan in 30 minutes. So we sit here and talk about living wage. Okay, a living wage, the connection to the SDG is no poverty and decent work and economic growth. So the idea of having a living wage, whether that means um, $15, whether you're just focusing on a number, but it's not just a number. So. If a company says, like Walmart, let's say Walmart decided that they, did you hear about the, the annual meeting last year, yesterday? Three years I went to their annual meeting. It was always this, I have Will Smith was up there one time. I was presenting for the resolution um, for the UUA on gender equality and non-discrimination. So I got to go meet a handler and be taken care of by the Walmart guys. But um, living wage, what would happen if Walmart paid a living wage? so that people who work for them don't qualify for food stamps? What if they had health care? What if it didn't matter that we, what if, what if we don't need health care for all? What if everybody, every company gives their employees health care? What would that look like? Okay, so living wage would be no poverty. It'd be eight decent, uh, number eight, decent place to work. Freedom of association, the right to collective bargaining, non-discrimination. So these human values get worked into the SDGs, and a company has to stand up and show up. So living wage, that assumes that you're not having child labor. And it assumes you don't have 16-hour work days. So then decent work and economic growth. Oh, don't forget zero hunger, because the right to food. If you have a, if you have a living wage, you have access to food. So the living wage piece ends up flowing into three SDGs. Of course, now, um, if you're not going to have children working 16 hours, like Uzbek cotton right now, is there's a huge battle on getting children to stop being forced to pick cotton. So uh, decent work and economic growth. Um, working hours, the right to health, the right to family life. So you look over here at SDG 3, 
Good health and well-being is that right to health. Under child labor, the right to health, the right to education. So taking the whole idea of a living wage for a company and expanding it, you have, let's see, one, eight, two, eight, three, three, four. How could you tackle what it means to have a living wage if you didn't have this framework? The framework is everything. It lets you go to leapfrog to the next area and then get the resources you need. I love this page because you know what? You're in good company here. So here we have, how many of you now when you see 1 through 17 are going to say, those are the STGs and I'm 7, 11, 12, and 15. How many of you now have a, an immediate comfort with what this means? So check this out. These are, there's 17 SDGs, the targets, the partnerships and commitments, money being spent. We don't have to do this alone. There's progress updates, there's action tweets, there's registered users. But look at, look who people are focused on. Life below water. Gene, look, check it out. Did you know you're the cool kid now? You're the cool kid. So look at the people who are focusing on this, the partnerships. And so it shows that, uh, oh, who's that? Who's pink? Number 10. Looks like number 10 needs some love. Number 10 needs some love. Who else needs some love? Yeah. So let's look at one company and one kind of little initiative. Is everything OK? Oh, we're getting ready to go questions. So PepsiCo, everybody knows Oxfam. Um, the Fair Company Community Partnerships, they're working so effectively. They include small smallholders, impact communities, use land and planning and development. So PepsiCo has taken on no poverty, zero hunger, gender equality, decent work and economic, 10 required inequalities, and partnerships for the goals. Um, and again, when you see this red line at the bottom, that shift, that's the focus on the social justice aspect. Uh, Better Strawberries Initiative. Check it out. Once again, you take a company, you take a project, and all of a sudden you see how many overlapping SDGs you fit with. And right here, the focus on gender discrimination worked its way through five SDGs. And then Malawi Tea and Indigenous, 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 does somebody want to guess that one? Edgenous? All right, Mike, what is it? What should it be? Mayor Pete needs to, do we have a, we have a lifeline to Mayor Pete? It's living wages, so here we go. Now this makes all the difference in the world. If you look on your table, you'll see this impact analyzer. I envision in your uh, copy room, a notebook with a bunch of these in here with holes punched in them. And you get an idea. You come in and say, you know, I, we have a patch of ground out there that's not being planted. And what, what happened if we put a butterfly pollinator garden. If you're my Facebook friend, you know I'm obsessed with bees. They have these little wings and these big bee butts. And they're so cute. I'm just fascinated. So what if you say, hey, I don't want bees to be a thing of the past. I want to focus on bees. So you say an impact analyzer. What if everybody in every company took this piece of paper and wrote something down and put some details, and then together you have an SDG group that comes and says, let's prioritize these. And every season we're going to tackle a different one. This gives you the format, this gives you the framing, because you want to be able to measure it. you got to be able to define it and measure it before you know that you've made a difference. How easy is this? Okay, have you ever heard of a project where you don't have to pay for anything? So you email the UN, you ask for permission to use the SDGs, you register. And you're going to start seeing these because I'm going to buy a bunch of these already. In fact, these little things you've seen on your chairs, I have those designed because I'm, I'm, I'm a sticker-aholic kind of person. You're going to see a lot of these. So my laptop should have my SDGs on it, and it's going to once I get these paid for. So you go to the UN website. You get the graphical assets. All these things are free. All the things in your hands here, you can decide what you want, every language possible, because this is not just a, an American or an English um, speaking initiative. Find a printing house. Talk to Trey at um, 
36 North. He's a great designer. Talk to him about where, would he get his, his, where he gets his stickers done. Order your stickers. Stickers arrive. You and permission arrives. And then you start putting these all over the place. You start having them on your name badge. What do I work on? What do you work on? So you show up at a, at a, um, at a party. And what if everybody had an SDG tattooed on their forehead? And you started, <laughs> what, if, what if you started seeing not just the person, but who they are and the work that inspires them? And that opened the line of Congress. You're going to do it. I know it. <laughs> She's going to have a hand of tattoo with it. So then you promote it internally. So am I crazy, or do we have enough time in our days to fill out the impact analyzer? Do we have enough time to do that? No? We're, this moment, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but so if we had this while we're waiting for a um, big copy job, and you put down there and said, you know, I thought about this. I wonder if that's a priority other people care about. Does it help you to break it down into little bits, put the details down, set some priorities, and then measure when success is there, and then punch holes in them and they go in a book when they're done? Am I the only one that thinks that sounds fun? <laughs> or Mike is going, damn, I'm trying to retire. I got no more projects in me. Do you got one project left, Mike? Respect for human rights, the single greatest way most companies can contribute to socially sustainable development. And here's resources. Many of you know Edith Wilson, rock scientist. She is a rock whisperer. So um, you're going to hear more about this. And she has a microphone, so that means I'm done. <laughs> okay, we're doing booth introductions, and there's, guess that there's going to be a surprise. Does anybody think you're going to hear what their SDGs are? What's the chance? Okay. Where are you starting there? Okay. Hi there. Um, I'm Natalie Mallory with Full Sun Composting, and I wanted to look at the target. I am number 12. Um, So the target that um, I'm working on is by 2030 to have, so cut in half, um, the per capita global food waste at the retail and consumer levels and reduce food losses along production and supply chain chains, including post-harvest losses. So um, we do that by providing um, commercial and residential food waste uh, pickup service. Um, yeah, that's what we do. And then I'm splitting hats today. So now pretend that I'm uh, a different person. Um, wanted to talk to you about what the health department does, the Tulsa Health Department does, especially related to goal number three, so good health and well-being. Um, really try that we have um, 10 locations um, and about 35 different programs um, that work under different grants um, that are funded in different ways to really bridge the gap um, and, and capture people that uh, might not have access to good, um, to good care, um, whether it is STD, I said it, <laughs> treatment. <laughs> Everybody in this room is going to say it. You just wait. You, you're That's laughing at us one. now. She's it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, um, dealing with teen pregnancy, reducing those rates, providing immunizations at no cost and low cost. Um, so anybody can... Um, can use the services at the health department. Um, you don't have to um, fall within um, certain guidelines or, or criteria. Um, so definitely be aware, um, be aware that um, if you need any, if you ha need health services or need to refer somebody um, to health services, um, the, the health department is happy to do that. Hi, I'm Adrienne Janes and this is Emily Smith. We're with NCOG and we run a program called uh, Tulsa Area Clean Cities. Our SDG focuses are 7, 9, 11, and 13. Uh, what you need to know for the 15 second introduction is that we work with electric cars and transportation electrification. So if you have questions about that, come talk to us. We work with fleets and people. Um, if you're interested in other alternative fuels, we can talk about compressed natural gas, idle reduction, all kind of stuff. Thanks. Before we get to Sally, we're going to introduce these guys. Hi, I'm Gary Allison. I'm with the Ready for 100 campaign and the Sierra Club today. 
for Ready for 100 campaign, we're a Sierra Club initiative. Our goal is to get as many cities, towns, and states as possible to adopt policies and laws that will, by 2035, have all electricity used within their borders come from clean, renewable sources, and by 2050, all energy used within their borders come from clean, renewable sources. The Sierra Club is Oklahoma's preeminent environmental lobbying organization. I'll just touch on what we did this last year. We focused on fighting climate change by promoting the transition from fossil fuels to clean renewable energy and making sure Oklahoma's laws protect human health and the environment. As you can imagine, we've had a tussle with the fossil fuel industry and big chicken this last year trying to protect our waterways. Uh, we've had all sorts of laws where we've tried to promote helping Oklahoma harness solar power. We have the sixth best solar resources in the nation. We have laws that are keeping that from being harnessed here. I'll stop here. There are many, many more, particularly fighting big poultry in terms of keeping our water resources safe. So you won't be surprised to find that I have another hat. So peace, justice, number 16. I'm on the Compassionate Tulsa Initiative. So um, that's a great passion of mine that if we led with our hearts every time we made a decision, life would be different. And the reason that you have this Compassion in Action is this is a Tulsa Interfaith Alliance initiative coming out. So you're going to start hearing more a lot about what would happen if we came together and we had like nice conversations and were nice to each other and didn't talk about politics. What would happen if we talked about real things that mattered? So, I'm Sally Broadway with Up With Trees. Our primary target is number 15 by planting trees throughout the Tulsa greater area and educating our community on how to grow and maintain our urban forest. But aren't you also 13? I mean, you, you cross into 13, don't you? 13, 14, 6, 3. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Foley, and I'm representing the Public Service Company of Oklahoma. We uh, have nine of the goals, so I will not go into all of them. But our overall goal is to provide rebates um, for en energy efficient equipment for both businesses and our customers. So let me know if you have any questions. Hi, I'm Kelsey Jones. I'm with Goodwill Tulsa Works, and also Adam Irby is here with me today. Um, we also have quite a few goals laid out, so come talk to us about it. Um, but at Goodwill, we have what's called Tulsa Works Career Academy. That's the department we're in, and we provide free or low-cost job training to the Tulsa community. We also help people find jobs after they've gone through our training, which is pretty short-term training we're talking about. All of our training also has credential behind it so people come out with cert certifications things to back up their job search or career change things like that so um, come talk to us later hello my name is elena i'm operations coordinator here at this machine we're a local nonprofit bike share service here in tulsa our goal is to provide transportation options for everyone that may need them and support uh, equitable transportation in Tulsa. Hello, I'm Anushka. I work at the food bank, and our primary um, SDG is number two. It's zero hunger. Um, we work with 24 counties in eastern Oklahoma to make sure everybody has food security. And we do this in multiple different ways, but I think one of our big things is zero waste as well because we work with grocery stores and make sure that we get their fresh produce that is not necessarily sellable, but definitely good to eat. So we provide the community with fresh produce and our 41% of our distribution is fresh produce. So we're really excited to share healthy food with people who need it. Hey y'all, I'm Ashley Bath and I'm the 2019 uh, Typros Sustainability Crew uh, leader. And Typros Crew uh, Sustainability, we care about environmental sustainability, nature and conservation, and health and wellness. Um, but we have overall seven other crews, which is why our STGs are three, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 60. We're almost uh, to the Sierra Club level. We do everything from <laughs> arts and entertainment, government relations, um, leadership and service, 
um, urbanism, business development, all those are all kinds of different type pros crews that help make t uh, Tulsa a better place to live and work and attract and retain young talent and business here in Tulsa. So come chat with us about all the different events we have. Hi, my name is Mandy Durham. Um, I'm here representing the Outreach Services Department of the Tulsa City County Library. Um, I'm new to the SDG concept, but I'm into it. Uh, <laughs> I think the obvious one is number four, quality education. Obviously, as a public library, we're all about um, equal access to information. And also a huge part of what we do is connect people with resources in the community, um, especially my department. We operate the bookmobile. Um, we go into all of the uh, Tulsa Housing Authority sites and, you know, in addition to checking out books and other materials that people could find at the library, um, we also get all kinds of questions about, um, you know, people needing different, to find different resources within the community. So we do a lot of research for them and kind of connecting them with, with what they need. Um, we also see a lot of older folks in assisted living centers. Um, we also have a literacy department that a lot of people aren't familiar with that operates out of my office. Um, we help people that are learning English as a second language and then we have our adult basic learners um, who are people that as adults need help with um, reading and literacy skills. So thank you. Come see me if you have questions. Hello, I'm Dustin Jaggers. I'm with the City of Tulsa Stormwater Quality Department. Yay! We mon I'm the only one that got a clap. I just want to point that out. Um, well, after the last two weeks, we, you are, we now know who you are. Yeah, I had to work a shift that is not any part of my job the last two weeks, so that was fun. But um, we monitor the creeks and streams that run throughout the city of Tulsa for pollution. We also inspect businesses to make sure they're following all the standards they're supposed to and investigate any issues we have. If we find a, a significant pollution in the stream, we find out where it's coming from. We also have a program called Save Our Streams where we educate citizens on how they can make a difference. So oh, I guess my number, I got a couple of them, but 14, Life Below Water would be the primary one. Thank you. Wow, we have some incredible resources. Let's give them all a round of applause. <laughs> I think with the remaining time, we have about, I think we're going to have to skip to questions just because of time, um, but uh, are there any questions you have for Julie on SDGs or any of the folks that are here around the Sustainable Development Goals and, and how they're approaching those? So if you have a question, just raise your hand and we'll bring the mic over to you. Okay, you are... <laughs> <laughs> Either lunch was full or, um, but uh, Julie, do you have anything else to add about just um, how uh, the next step for people, if they want to get more involved at their workplaces or at home, um, how to get more involved with sustainable development goals? Go sign up at the UN. Ask to be able to be added to their list. Start noodling around their websites. If you, um, I've got a few printed copies of the presentation, but if you get an electronic version, uh, noodle through it. Check it out. Find out every time you click on something, you're going to go deeper. So stormwater has all sorts of other things related to it. Um, libraries. I was thinking um, no poverty is a big thing about libraries, isn't it? That that education goes directly into that. So um, this is a pretty overwhelming topic. It's not simple, but it is straightforward. And all it takes is an interest in Googling SDG number five. And you will be surprised at the three million Google responses that you get. So um, dig in. When, you, when something looks interesting, think of the framework. And think of how many people are, have gone before you and are working on that. And you don't have to do this alone. So. Let's give Julie a round of applause. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully we've introduced it to you. Do a little uh, digging in. I know we reached out to a couple of our scorecard members to ask if they are looking at their sustainable development goals and it started the conversation. Uh, I know there's a team they may stick around afterwards today to kind of dig into that a little bit. So this is an introduction. We'll probably circle back around. And I know uh, for our scorecard members, we're looking at adding a filter inside the scorecard where you can click and say, how many of these relate to sustainable development goals? So um, it's, it's something, it's an opportunity, another way to communicate around 
around sustainability. But we thank you very much uh, for coming, and you brought a lot of gifts for us. So we're going to do a couple drawings. So Jessica Holtzapel, did I say it correctly? All right, hey, Jessica, come yay. on down. We have tons of, come this way, dear. We have tons of books, and um, we have honey and, and all kinds of things that Julie brought as gifts today, and we thank you so much. So, okay. We got eight more. We're going to do it really quickly. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Next one, Amanda Curtis. Woo -woo. Oh, Come I think on she... down. Oh, All right. Woo -hoo. You are the next winner of a prize. <laughs> All right. April Kepford. Woo. Yay. All right, April. Go ahead. Let's go right on over there. All right. And Buford. Pull it. Pull it. Perfect. Yay. That's All four. Right. We've got right. five Come more. On All right. <laughs> Robert Reese, come on down, woo! All right, way to go, Robert. <laughs> Jeff Bonham. Jeff, Jeff Bonham. Bonham. All right, okay, come on down, all right. Woo, Jeff! If I pronounce names correctly. Shelly. C-A-D-A-M-Y. Academy, right. come on down. Yay. I was never elected to announce names at graduation, <laughs> so sorry. Pam Taylor! Woo! Woo! Come on Pam. down, Pam. <laughs> Let's see, how many do we have? One more. I think one more. Okay. Yep. Skip Morgan. Yay! All right, Skip. Come on down. Woo! Okay. All right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all the gifts, Julie. And please stick around and talk to uh, the nonprofits and groups that are here today because uh, they're helping make Tulsa a better place to live, work, and play for, for you and future generations. We'll see you next month, July 11th. Thank you. <laughs>